The following is a production of Dan Perkins Media. Dan Perkins Media proudly presents Moms Across America, a program where women can speak their minds openly and freely without fear of reprisal. Moms Across America is about the issues of the day confronting America from a mom's point of view. And now, here are the moms. Hello and welcome to Moms Across America. This is Vicki Tompkins with my good show host, Annie. I'm so glad we're here together and we have Dan on here too. So you know who he is. <laughs> That's just Dan. <laughs> Thank you, Dan, for being on here with us. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about getting that, that constitution. You know, you need to go get that at ashbrook.com forward slash constitution. Because what do I always say? If you don't know your rights, how do you know how to defend it? So make sure you get your, it's free. It's free. Go ahead and get the constitution and read it. Okay. I put on my mama voice. I'm going to take my mama voice off now. We don't have too much to talk about today. So let's, let's see what we can come up with. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I mean, we have it. something called a presidential election coming up next week. I mean, we're, we're what, six days away from the election, the general election throughout the country. Dan had posed a question to us asking us, what well, what do we think the first five things that Trump would do in his first 30 days? Well, usually, Dan, it's the first 100 days that you're asked, but you said 30 days. So that's that's really a lot of pressure. Yes. <laughs> Just you know. But if you think about it, Vicki, he's got, he only has four years. So yeah. the, day he, the day he's inaugurated, he's a lame duck. He yeah, doesn't he, have a, he can't run again. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's yeah. he's yeah. got every day he doesn't do something is a wasted opportunity because he's only got so many days. And yeah. so I said 30 days because I think that the constituents want to see, I don't think that they necessarily want to see all five things, but I think they want to see him out of the chute start doing something. That's why I well, said just, 30 days. Just from what I've seen from, from Donald Trump, the man is like a machine. I mean, he gets very little sleep, needs very little sleep, and he's on the go. He outpaces young people that are around him because he gets so much done in eight hours. Right. You know, So I, I think he already has it all scripted out what he's going yes. to do, Look, you know, those first, well, the first his, days. His, Here's the perfect thought, Vicky, because he will be a lame duck president. He's got a young, vibrant man running with, as him as his vice president. Day one, appoint him as the borders are to do the job Kamala Harris failed to do and show that J.D. Vance is presidential material more so than she is. And then yeah. J.D. Vance can succeed him in the presidency in the next election. That's good. That's that's good. That's, that's a good that's idea. Very good. Good job there, Annie. There are, yeah, there are some... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just saying that there are people who are saying that one of Trump's principal jobs is to spend an inordinate amount of time with J.D. and giving him the opportunity to learn as much as he can about the presidency so that he is well prepared when it happens. I think that much like I, I, I apologize for this analogy, but it's the only one I can come up with. On the Friday before Joe Biden resigned from the, the campaign, Kamala Harris had the worst approval rating in the history of vice presidents. Three days later, three days later on Monday, polls came out that said she was tied with Donald Trump. <laughs> and, and, you know, you can, you can take that for whatever, whatever it is. But I look at it and say, America is excited about the possibility of Mr. Trump being elected. They want the anger and the frustration to be gone with and turn to productive things for this country. And the sooner he can do that, the better off we're all going to be emotionally. You think he's angry? Trump? Yeah. Yes. He may not be showing it, but I, he's a, I, first of all, I believe he is a patriot. When he says he sees what the Democrats have done to the country over the last four years, he's angry about that. He's a compassionate person. He's a patriot. Mm -hmm. When the country is being mismanaged and people's lives are being affected, it affects patriots and their their emotion. He doesn't show a lot of emotion, but mm -hmm. by the same token, I believe he's very angry of what they've done to this country. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of us are. 
I thought it was interesting because my little list that I have here, the top of my my number one thing was the border. So for you to say the same thing, I thought that was <laughs> pretty interesting. I think that's you. We have to, you know, like when you're when you when you're doing any type of repair, you have to stop the leak. That, that's that's where that's where the leak is, and that leak has to 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 be plugged. So um, I think I do believe that he's going to undo what the the stuff that Biden came in and took away. I mean, because our border, if if the little amount of wall, some would say it's a small amount, what, 800 miles or something like that, a wall that was put up, that little amount was doing a, a, a great job. Mm-hmm. So with illegal in Texas. I believe one of his main goals is going to complete that wall. I really, really do. It's going to be reverse. Necessary. I would reverse all of the executive orders that Biden did that destroyed Absolutely. the wall. Absolutely. His pen should be hitting that one minute after he signs in. He swears exactly. in. Exactly. Well, He'll probably have people already on the border ready to start putting up wall. <laughs> and arrest. I mean, let me- I, be, I personally believe that the Biden administration is misleading or lying to the American people on the level of illegal immigration. Absolutely. That there are a number of legal entry points, and then there's the rest of the area, which is the wall is designed to try and block. So people can come across the border with no entry point, and they get picked up by the Border Patrol, and they're taken to an entry point level and they're processed and then released into the country. What mm-hmm. Biden and the administration is doing is channeling those illegals away from the open borders into the the legal crossing points. Not that you're legal, to, that, that you come in, that you're not illegal, but you didn't cross in an open area where you where you had illegal entry. You come in through the, the ports of entry and you're processed as a person who is an illegal well, immigrant. But they were also processing them outside of our country and then bringing them in. Say we pre-processed them. We pre-processed them. So they didn't really technically cross the border illegally. We just allowed them to to be illegal here in the United States. So, I mean, it's it's, you're talking basically the same thing. It's how they're circumventing what our laws are. And we need our laws to be enforced from day one. And that's what we need. We need. From that moment he takes office, the Border Patrol is there to enforce the border, not to pamper and pamper these That's these right. people coming over illegally, uh, to screen them, to make sure the children are not being trafficked, uh, the drugs are not coming in. I mean, we have record number of fentanyl deaths like ever, never before. And now they have that right. new pink cocaine coming across that doesn't contain any co- cocaine, but is killing thousands upon thousands of Americans. And it, 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 we have to put our foot down on day one. And that border is the, the priority at this point. I heard of what I thought was a great suggestion and I'm, uh, on, at the, about the border. And I'd be interested in if you've heard about it and if not, what you think about it. Mr. Vance, I heard, wants to have the president declare all the, and the cartels in Mexico as terrorist organizations. Yep. Yes. And yep. with ter- and he was saying with terrorist organization, we can send our resources, drones, planes, and soldiers into Mexico to destroy the plants and disrupt what's going on. Would you subscribe to that? Oh yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Okay, no, because wouldn't. think about we- what is terror. What is a terrorist? A terrorist is a person that brings terror. That is what these guys are doing. So yeah, they're terrorists. Mm-hmm. Well, not only that, we know for a fact many of these drug cartels are working with the Chinese and and, and cir- circumventing our our security. We also know they are working with Islamic terrorists in South America, through Central America, and into Mexico. The coyotes are helping to bring them across. So yes, they are aiding and abetting terrorists. Therefore, they are also terrorists. Yes, and and, yeah. and I'm going to go a different direction here a little bit concerning the border. Yeah. One That's of the okay. things, too, that I want to see happen, and I know a lot of this has to do with Congress, but they have got to fix the broken system of legal immigration. It should not take a person 10 or more years to become a citizen. That is insane. That is ridiculous. 
we have all the capabilities of being able to do the background search on this person, finding out who they are. Are they a productive person? We have all that information. It should not take that long. And I think that's part of the frustration for a lot of people that come here legally, that it takes so long and it is so expensive. Why? I understand if they're coming here and they're really truly wanting to acclimate to become an American, why does it take so long? I, I don't understand that. And I, and I, of course, I don't know all the ins and outs of what has to be processed and done and everything, but I am very familiar with bureaucracy and that this reeks of it because it should not take that long, but yet they want people to come here illegally, bringing all kinds of trouble. Why is that so easy? You see, there's 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 something wrong here. There's a this this is the system is broken. Why are you yeah. giving amnesty to illegal aliens? Why are you giving them better government benefits than our own veterans? Why yes. are you giving them better housing and food and medical care and everything else than our own veterans and our own citizens? And when you have someone coming here legitimately, we know their background. We can trace it, and they are not allowed to become a citizen for ten years or more. But an illegal alien can come through be protected, being given the right to vote in some instances yes. that we know about. Yeah, and recently. They're treated as an American citizen when they are here illegally, and yet they're given amnesty to become an American citizen. This is what a friend of mine calls bass backwards. Yes, exactly, exactly. And so that's something I want to see coupled with the whole border thing, is that we fix that. There has to be a better way to get those who come here elite, who come here legally, who desire to do things the right way and want to be an American. It's different than, than these people coming in here illegally. They just want to cause trouble. They don't want to be an American. They want the benefits of American citizenship, but they don't want to become an American. I don't even, there's, there's, there's a, I don't even know how to describe being American, except I love this country. I love this country. I want the best for the people here in this country. And I've been this way since I was a kid. I didn't understand it, but I knew I love living where I live. And so I want to see that from the people who want to be citizens. It's because they love this country and they love what this country can offer. Not the freeway, not here you go. Let me give you something free but to truly want to become an American citizen. Okay, we hit on one of our five. All right, we'll be <laughs> right back here shortly. And maybe, just maybe, we'll get through the other ones that we want to talk about today. We'll be right back after the break. That sound of the emergency squad happens 34 times per hour, 24-7 in the United States, carrying someone who is dying from a drug overdose to the ER. 70% of these runs are people are dying from the vicious drug called fentanyl. Over the last 10 years, 1 million Americans have died from fentanyl. In 2019, 112,000 children ages 12 and 13 were on opioids. The fentanyl overdose rates are rising two and a half times faster than that of heroin. Now there is an FDA approved test for the presence of fentanyl in the system. The test is safe, simple, and 99.5% accurate. In just five minutes, you can find out if your child, loved one, or employee is using fentanyl. If you want to save someone's life, go to thefentanyltest.com and learn more about this dangerous drug and how you can get your five-minute test and keep your child out of that squad. And we're still on our list. Let's see how far we can get moms across America. So your number one, Annie, was the border. Well, my right. number one was the border. So I'm going to give my number two. <laughs> Well, actually, we kind of did my number two. I said to put all that was re removed by Biden, put it back in place, what Trump had had in place. So never mind. I'll go to my third one. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, I, what I want to see is I want to see your number two expanded just a little. All I want to say is we want to re rescind all of the bad things that Mr. B Mr. Biden did. Yes. But... Uh, if we have a Democratic Congress and a Repu Republican Senate, wouldn't be acceptable. I would hope we have both Congress and the Senate as 
Republicans. Then what I want to see, instead of this executive order stuff, I want this turned into legislation. I got you. Which becomes more, I mean, look how long they've been trying more to permanent. In, o- overturn Obamacare because it's legislation, it's hard. So I want to get rid of this executive privilege thing that the next president can turn it over. I want to work on getting those things that you want to get rid of, get rid of them and replacing them with legislation. Okay. Annie, what's your I number mean, two? Well, let me just say this, because one of the number one things that, that Biden stopped was the uh, pipeline. That has to be opened. I mean, he's he's depleted all the reserves. That has to be put back in place. So that was my main no. thing. Well, that I would definitely agree with. But my my thing was when he closed the pipeline, he broke a contract with a private company. Yep. I'm sorry. Where where does business law, law say that you can't sue the federal government for breaking a contract? I, I I'd love to know where that is and why the people that were doing the work out there hasn't hasn't fought to get that pipeline open unless the news is just not carrying it and we're not we're being kept in the dark. So I agree with an executive order on this case, reinstate those contracts fully. Yes. And then award the companies if they should finish that contract ahead of time to repay them for the money they've lost, you know, to to revitalize our energy, open up for lithium exploration because there are tons of deposits here within the United States. We don't have to be dependent upon China mining in Afghanistan and Pakistan for lithium to get our electric batteries. This should be done here. Bring manufacturing back home, which Trump is, 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 is fighting for. So I agree that the next thing he should be doing is bringing manufacturing and businesses back to the United States, whether it's through tariffs, uh, through sanctions, but to turn around and bring it home. Because we are the yeah. greatest nation in the world for manufacturing, and we have allowed the past several administrations to destroy it. Let's yeah, rebuild right. it. And that's what right. Americans are. Individuals first, for individual freedom and liberty above or, uh, above and beyond. And that's what a true American is, not sitting at the under the heel of the dictator sitting in the White House. Exactly. Okay, Vicki, what's your number three? Reduce regulation. Because if we can reduce regulations on businesses, I tell you what, not only will incomes go up, but businesses can expand and ha- hire more people. So it's going to, the thing that I loved about President Trump, he said, if you bring in a regulation, a new regulation, you have to get rid of two. That is powerful. And so I would like to see him doing that again with these okay. new regulations that have come in. We got to get rid of two of them, because if we keep hampering business, we're not going to go anywhere. Because it's these small businesses in particular, they are the backbone of America. The thing I like about small business is you have, it. it's not, I don't want to call it like a mom and pop, but you have that family feel and people are more loyal because they know you care about them in these smaller businesses. So I would like to see the reduction in these regulations against businesses, small and large. Right. Yeah. And what's the your hard- number three? Number well, three. I agree with Vicki on this one because the heartbeat of America is the small business owner. Because small business owners hire more in more people than large companies. Yes. The large company goes fine, but the small businesses are the ones that stick around. And I have been a small business owner. I know how much people depended upon me. But what I would like to see is the re- re- reclamation of our education system. Insist that the this indoctrination, the CRT, the DEI is out of our school. The, Yes. Federal government with their thumb on our education system has got to stop. Allow the states to enforce teaching of the founding gov- uh, documents, whether it's from King Harold's codification of English common law, the Magna Carta, the Mayflower Compact, the Declaration yes. of Independence, and go forward with the Constitution. Bring back what we truly stand for. That's not political indoctr- indoctrination. That is our history, and our t- students don't understand that. And that's why there's so much wokeism, because they seem to feel if you say the wrong thing and hurt my feelings, you just committed a crime. That's not how America works. Maybe somewhere in liberal Europe or under some dictatorship, if you insult the dictator, fine. But no, 
That's not what we were founded on. Bring back those founding principles. Reclaim our youth and education system away from the federal government and yeah. withhold any federal doctors dollars going to schools that still support it. Any state or federal doctor dollars going in there, withhold them. I would go so far as to get rid of the education system altogether. Okay. Number four, Vicky. Number four, drill, baby, drill. Let's get the gas flowing again. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> drill, we're thinking baby, alike. We I gotta tell you. Alike. I tell you, this stuff has hampered a whole section in Colorado because we had voted that we keep drilling, we keep drilling. And of course, our legislature went in and said, no, no, no. Even though 96% of Coloradans said, keep it as is. And then, of course, then you have the regulations and you have this and that and the other. I'm ready to open all that up again. I know people who lost everything because of what happened here in Colorado in the gas industry. So drill, baby, drill, frack, baby, frack. Let's get it done. I would add on to that offshore drilling because drilling, it's, it's big yes. with me. Because what people don't realize that at one point, all of the uh, salmon had disappeared, not salmon, uh, Red Snapper, I'm sorry. Red Snapper had disappeared out of the Gulf of Mexico. And when they opened the Gulf of Mexico up to drilling to those platforms, because they act as a, a reef to the fish, those platforms, it became abundant. I've been fighting for that off our coast. And they said, no, because people might see from the beach. It's going to be five miles out at the edge of the shelf. And it will also help not only with tourism, that people go out there to see this, the dolphins, the whales and everything, but also bring back a, a fishing industry that has been decimated by yeah. overregulation, yep. by yep. these liberal policies. Bring them back. Allow us offshore drilling. Let's stop and build the refineries back. We haven't had a new refinery since the 1970s. And right now, Gavin Newsom is chasing the oil industry out of California. What's so going to happen? Either. We're going to be getting our oil and gas refined through China. Bring yeah, it back that's going to be nice. That's Bring it back home. Clean. <laughs> At least ours is clean. <laughs> Jeez, was just some of the, how do these people get in office? I don't understand. My number, so number five, five, I had a number five, but it kind of went into everything else that we were talking about. So my new number five is this, get the J sixers out of prison. Thank get you. Our J Sixers out of prison. Restore these people who did no violent acts. I have a friend here in Colorado. Uh, you guys may have heard about her, who is the the great grandmother who went in to pray, and this judge fined her a hundred and three thousand dollars. She is confined to her home. She has an ankle bracelet. And she can only get out of her home two hours a day. It is sickening. She did nothing wrong. And it's time that these people be restored. Mm. Now, I completely agree with that. I've had some of the J6ers on uh, recently also. Uh, the lawfare against conservatives and Republicans or anyone that is a Trumper has got to stop. Yes. And lawfare on either side must cease and desist. That is not what our constitution stands for. It was never intended to use the law against your political opponent. That's right. Especially when this current justice department has violated their own 90 day rule of not bringing any charges or making anything public 90 days before an election. When you have that happening one week before an election, deliberately, yep. I'm sorry, that uh, Jack Smith should have been kicked to the to the curb a long, long time ago. Long time ago. It's time to reclaim our republic. Not this democracy. It's a republic. republic. The rule Thank of you. law must stand. It's not the law for thee and not for me. That's right. And we've seen the lawfare against Trump. I saw it here personally against my husband because he didn't agree or want something that another person lied about. Come on. That kind of stuff has got to stop. It's like you said, that is not how our founding fathers created this nation. We are a constitutional republic. And I get sick and tired of hearing them talk about saving a democracy. We don't want a democracy because that turns into anarchy and all kinds of other mess. Dictatorship that they're always talking about Trump's going to do. That's what they're doing. And that has got to stop. Um, I believe most of these things, if President Trump came in and did our five <laughs> or 10, 
Uh, we agreed on most of them. Uh, I truly believe that things can be turned around really, really quickly, really, really quickly. So we just have to hope that he's going to win. I do hope that he's going to win. Ricky, what's, well, what's, what's going to delay him? Delay him. What's going to, he gets elected and he's got this mission. Is it, he has to have a, a Republican House and Senate to, in order yes. to get things done? Well, he's had it before and he got things done. He had it before without them and got things done. I believe Trump is the type of person, he's very persuasive, I think, when it comes to talking to pe people on the political level. I think with the things that, that has been seen in our economy and in our nation, I believe that those Republicans who have hindered him, well, some of them already resigned and are gone, but those who are still left who want to hinder him, I believe they're going to think twice before they do. Okay, so I got one more question for each of you. What percentage of, of the electoral college is he going to get? How many how many votes is he going to get? 300. Annie? <laughs> I just threw that out there. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Um, I've, I've seen a couple of these polls coming in very, very close, but I think the deciding day will be on Tuesday the 5th when the diehard Trumpers will show up to vote. I think it may be closer to somewhere around 275, 285. So really close. With 270 as required for president, 275 means that Kamala is going to get like 265? I'm I'm being more optimistic. Uh, I'm, I'm saying closer to 285. 285. Just lost my earpiece. Oops. You know what? Whatever it takes for him to win, if it's 270, I'll take it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. at that point. I hope it will be, I, I, I'm hoping that it's going to be a landslide like it was in 2020. Oh, excuse me. That didn't count. Uh, anyway, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, a landslide where they actually see we have so many votes come in that they cannot overcome it. That's they what cannot I mean. deny it. Do you think, in closing here, do you think that he can win the popular vote? I'm hoping. Yes, yes yep. I do. That's my hope. Yes. Okay. Which may okay. stop the popular Stop vote movement. That we'll, alone will stop. We will, talk the, we will talk next week, the day after the election. And thank you yes. for joining us. And Vicki, take us out. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us today on Moms Across America. And as I always say, moms, you are America. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. This is my home.
hometown. 